Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Hold My Milkshake. In this episode, we visit a restaurant called Sibuli Unlimited Korean Barbecue. Was that the way to pronounce it? I sure hope I pronounced that right. Now why am I here? Firstly, a little background. When I first visited the Philippines about 15 years ago, there were hardly any Korean restaurants. Now there's a ton of them in every mall and in every city. Now, how did this come about? Well, I spoke to a Korean expat and he told me that around 20 years ago, many Koreans left their home country to study English. Why did that happen? Because apparently the job market in Korea is so competitive that knowing English gets you a leg up when it comes to a high paying job over there. So the next question is, why did so many Koreans end up going to the Philippines? Well, it seems that the Philippines offers several advantages. The first being that living in the Philippines is cheap compared to native English speaking countries like Australia, the UK and the US. The second most important reason is that the English is widely spoken in the Philippines. On top of that, here's a little known fact. Before World War II, the Philippines was the third largest English speaking country in the world. Yup, it's true, and I kid you not. So, because of these reasons, many Koreans ended up in the Philippines to study English. And guess what? They brought their native cuisine with them. At first, these restaurants catered mostly to Korean expats. But soon enough, Filipinos ended up going to them too. Why is that? Well, it's pretty clear that most Filipinos love to eat out and try other cuisines. And they immediately took to Korean food like a duck takes to water. And that brings us back to this restaurant, Sib Yuli. Now, how this place works is that you order various dishes and raw meats, and they serve it at your table, which has a built-in grill that you can cook the various cuts with. Now, even though you can order as many dishes as you want, they will charge you a penalty if you fail to finish the food. There is also a two-hour time limit, so you need to be quick about it. The meal comes with the typical Korean side dishes, which are called banchan. This includes raw lettuce, a kani salad, sweet potato salad, kimchi, pickled radish, and your various dipping sauces for the meats, which includes the ubiquitous Korean red pepper sauce as well. Also included are rice, bone marrow soup, an omelet dish, and japchae, which are Korean rice noodles. Now you may have noticed something here. Some of the dishes I mentioned are missing from my table. Now why is that? The simple answer is keto. Yes, for this meal, I will be engaging in the ketogenic diet. Now, what is a ketogenic diet, you ask? Well, it's a diet that allows you to eat high fats, lots of protein, but skips the carbohydrates like rice, bread, sugar, and potatoes. By taking away the carbs, your body's metabolism undergoes ketosis, which means that instead of storing fat, your body burns it. So your next question is, why am I doing that? The answer is simple. A keto diet allows me to eat more of the good stuff, the meats, and since this is an all-you-can-eat restaurant, I can gorge on lots of protein, as much as I want, for the next couple of hours anyway. Now along with various raw beef and pork cuts, you can also get fried chicken. Yes, the very same Korean style fried chicken that's taking the world by storm. This is what I like about this restaurant. You can order as much of the stuff as you want. So. I went ahead and ordered all three versions of their fried chicken. The sweet soy and garlic, the spicy traditional version, and their newest addition, the deep fried butter chicken. It pretty much tastes how it's advertised. It's like eating a mouthful of butter with, with bits of chicken. Now there's other stuff that you can order as well, like their wonderful Korean pancakes, which I got, and their version of sushi, which I didn't get. Now, I'm not a fan of Korean sushi and would prefer the original Japanese one instead, but since they don't have it over here, then we're not going to order it. Now, you can also get an a la carte menu item, but who needs any of that? As far as drinks go, nah, I'll just stick with water. And so here we go. I start the grilling by placing the assorted cuts of meat onto the grill until, and you know, they just wait until they char a little. Now, Koreans don't like to burn their meat because they think it causes cancer but I prefer to have a little caramelization on the meat. Why? Because it gives it a sweeter taste. 
The traditional way of eating this kind of grilled meat is by placing the cooked protein onto the raw lettuce along with some sauce and veggies and eating it like a wrap. But since I'm in a hurry, I don't even bother. I just dip and eat the slices as soon as they're cooked and stuff the lettuce into my mouth afterwards, all in one big bite. Mmm, this is getting good. The kimchi and the pickled radish acts like palate cleansers in between the juicy bites of barbecued beef and pork strips. What I do is to alternate between eating the grilled meats and the fried chicken, and then I take a break from those two by chewing on the sides. The addition of the crunchy pancakes with their spring onions is a heavenly godsend. It is said that a Korean host is only pleased when a customer leaves the restaurant after he is burping and bloated. <laughs> and I aim to do just that. Now with the first batch of food gone, I quickly get their attention and order another round. This is where it gets interesting. There's several types of cuts you can order, from thin slices of fatty pork to their thick strips that resemble the kind of Canadian bacon. They give you a pair of scissors to cut the meat into manageable bite-sized pieces too. You can also order raw chicken for grilling, but when you have the amazing fried chicken available, who needs that? I wisely skip that bit. At this stage, there's nothing you can do but just keep on eating. It all turns into a routine. Place the newly cooked strips of meat onto your plate and have them cool down a little. In the meantime, you replace the now empty grill with more raw cuts. And now you dip the cooked meat into the sauce and eat it. Rinse and repeat. More replacement plates come and go. And even though we've skipped the carbs, my stomach is getting full. Things start to slow down as the accumulated food in my gut gets piled on, one on top of the other. In time, the primal, hungry pleasure steadily gives way to a heavy satisfaction of a job well done. Even though there's still another 30 minutes left to go, I feel I've finally had enough. I skip breakfast and lunch just to pig out like this, and I think I've finally earned my money's worth. Time for the bill. The cost is around 650 pesos or just under $12. Is this worth it? I would say heck yeah. To top it all off, you also get a free dessert of ice cream mixed in with some coffee jelly. Now wait a minute. You may have noticed that I actually broke the keto diet by eating the pancakes and the ice cream. You're right, but the temptation was just so much that I just couldn't help but give in. I mean, if you're having fun, why not go all the way, right? That's it for now. If you like this, then please put a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again.